Part 1, Chapter 8, Tempered Balance Friday The peaceful lull and optimistic daydream I betrothed this morning had not panned out so perfectly. Not that the day had been bad, just busy. Tests, pop quizzes, people interrupting class with nonsense. My emotions started out fairly easy going, but as the day progressed, I started to fluctuate like a metronome. One second, I was embodied by tranquil bliss, coasting alongside the minutes and doing my work. The next, I was paranoid and hyper-aware of my surroundings. My stomach rippled and burned with what felt like gas, but never amounted to anything. I ran to the bathroom twice already just to have the discomfort disappear without reason. Or moved to my chest inexplicably. My anxiety started to rise as I played a guessing game with my own body. Heartburn crippled me for ten minutes, and almost immediately after, I was nearly asleep at my locker. It's like someone had a remote control to my body and mind with a bunch of presets, and they just hit random buttons at random times. At last, things seemed to settle by the time I took my seat in art class. Perfectly natural and comfortable zen overlapped me, and I got this sense that all that mess was behind me now. I paid attention to the lesson, practiced perspective line work, doodled a little on the side, and got graded on a self-portrait I handed in last week. 89%. Solid. When the bell rang and we were all set loose into the halls, I left my seat with renewed hope for the day. Whatever I was experiencing up until this point didn't matter because it was over, and I had a plan for what came next. I exited the classroom with gusto, the clatter of swarming footsteps within this reverberant stretch of tile and concrete picked and prodded at the small brain ache that warned me not to get carried away. Phys ed was supposed to be my destination. However, today, I decided to test the tolerance of my perfect grade by skipping it entirely and trotting towards the front office instead. As I ascended the main ramp, my ears popped with a pressure change from a hallway to the claustrophobic lobby. The windows and glass double doors that proudly outlined the main entrance filtered a golden dazzle from the peering sun beyond this capsule. The sliding glass window on my right scraped along the plastic guides, anticipating my approach given the idol I found myself in. A friendly smile invited me closer. Kimberly Ann, how may I help you? The front desk lady greeted me, chipper and polite as expected. Hey there, Melissa. I've got a favor to ask. I responded kindly. A favor? How rare, she giggled. Yep, it's uh, sort of a big one, maybe. I gripped my teeth and gave a pondering smirk. Out of all the staff in this little school of mine, she was the only one who got a taste of the dork in me. Her big tooth smile and unorthodox fashion sense stuck in the 80s were a magnet to admiration and admonishment equally. Gossip and cruelty always found their way back to her, but they never did waver her light. What can I help you with? she asked. I leaned one arm on the counter and lowered my voice. There's a girl that recently transferred here named Tansu Hikono. I, I was wondering if she has a guide. And if not, could I be the one to show her around? She gave a quick look of uncertainty, then started sifting through a nearby folder. Yes, Miss Hikono. She was supposed to have a guide, I'm pretty sure. I found her wandering the hall yesterday alone, lost and confused, so I don't think she has one. Ah, yes, she was supposed to have Nicholas Trenton show her the ropes, but it seems he has the flu, she said with finger quotations. I always knew that boy was shy, but this is just too much. I guess that means the spot is mine, I grinned slyly. Her dimples flexed with such a big smile. I guess so. She reached into a drawer beside her and took out a laminated hall pass. Here you are. This pass gives you full immunity and permission to take her to any classroom, and even outside to the sports field if you want. Sheesh, that's a lot of power. You sure you can trust me? I said sarcastically. She looked up at me past her glasses frame. You might be one of the only kids I trust with that. Huh? 
I took it and examined the sheen. Do you know if she's free now? Because I'm good to show her around. I decided not to go to phys ed today. I rubbed the back of my neck. She gave me a shrewd glare. Mm-hmm. Well, let me check. Her slender fingers rapidly tapped the keyboard. It just so happens she's in study hall right now. If you hurry, the two of you will have around 30 minutes of freedom. That's perfect, I exclaimed. You know what? I think it would be all right if you two had a little extra time. How about you take advantage of two class periods? She wrote something down on some loose paper. That's being super lenient. You sure that's okay? I asked. Absolutely. The sooner that girl learns her way around, the sooner she can get her groove. She chomped on her gum and set the paper aside. And like I said, I know I can trust you. She winked. You're the best, Melissa. Thanks a bunch, and I, I promise not to abuse the pass. I laughed. You'd better not. Once you're done today, just bring it back to me. I only have the one. Her sweet but tinny voice could bring joy out of anyone, even when she was casually demanding. Of course. Thanks again. You're welcome. You can find her in the middle school science room right now. I nodded and quickly made my way there from the office. By now, the next period had started and the halls were barren, so I was able to move at a rapid pace and arrive at the science door in just under a minute. I entered quietly and caught the eyes of a few studying kids. Tanzu looked up from the textbook as well, wide-eyed but in a shy way. I have never seen someone take up such a small amount of space on their desk. One textbook, perfectly centered, and a single pencil beside it. Everything else, as far as I could tell was in the bag beside her, close to the leg of the chair. Mr. Kell looked up from across the room and smiled. I gingerly shut the door and made my way over to his desk. Here sat a fairly fit, middle-aged, balding man with thin frame glasses and a tie so loud and full of obnoxious colors he teaches the classroom with a megaphone, always smiling and giving every ounce of his attention to his students. I hear he stays after school for hours just helping kids with work from his class or even work from other classes. Though some people say he's a bit weird. Hello, Kimberly. What can I help you with? He asked politely, beaming with hushed glee. I've told you a hundred times, just Kim, Jeremy. I mocked. Kim? Of course. He returned a fake insulted expression and chuckled. I was just wondering if I could borrow Tansu. I showed him the hall pass. I gotta give her a little tour of the school and whatnot. He adjusted his glasses and took the pass from me. He then held it above his head and examined it like it was a forged hundred dollar bill. If that's a fake, that's a pretty darn good one. No prob, but only if you do me a small favor. What's that? I asked. Can you try and convince her that I'm not going to bite her head off? My sensible jokes and charming smile don't open her up. He frowned. All she did was go dead silent and plot her escape route. I don't want her thinking I'm some weirdo. He explained with his hands, eyes flicking up and down my body. But you are a weirdo. I tried to joke. He grinned and gave me back the pass. Some help you are. All right. You'd better get a move on. Sure thing. I approached her and gestured to follow. She slipped the textbook into her bag and rose from the desk. Once outside the closed door, she looked to me for answers. W where are we going? She asked quietly. I positioned myself in front of her and gave a big confident grin, then whipped out the pass, pretending it was a police badge. I'm taking you on a tour around the school. I see you've done well so far today, but I want to make sure you have any questions answered and show you where to take shortcuts. She was a little slow to respond. In fact, for a second, I thought she wouldn't respond at all. She just kind of stared at me, then the pass, and back to me. R really? You do that for me? Yeah? You're new, and I'd hate to see you wander around like before or have to face the embarrassment of bursting into the wrong classroom. I snickered. She spoke very, 
very softly. I wouldn't burst into a room. N not literally burst, but like, y you know what I mean. She didn't smile. Instead, her head lowered slightly. Thank you, she whispered. I couldn't help but smirk at her politeness. Hey, no problem. Now, come on, I gestured. She shuffled her feet a little, then nodded. We moved slowly together. From the starting point that was this door, I moved us to the end of the hall on our right. I figured we would start at the emergency exit at the end of the middle school wing, then work our way out to the main hall, and then to the lunchroom, branching off from there. We reached the big, red, glowing exit sign above a set of double doors and stopped. I widened my arms like I was giving a tour at a museum. This is the door you, hopefully, won't ever use. Mm-hmm, she hummed. This is just the starting point. Now we're going to go back the way we came, and I'll stop at each door and explain what room it is, its number, and who the teacher is. Okay? Sure thing. She finally let a teeny smile loose, and her posture seemed to loosen. This hall had some of the main classrooms, AP English, foreign language, reading, and for some reason, they used one room for high school biology. Each class was occupied right now, so I couldn't show her inside the rooms, but I did point them out for future reference. We reached the opposite end of the hall, and were met with the first corner to round. As we got near it, a couple of stray students came around the corner, a guy and a girl. Tansu was very quick to reposition behind me, taking on the role of my delicate shadow. The guy was explaining himself to the girl as they went by us. Look, I told him I was going to meet them at the diamond after school. Sorry, babe. Next time? She scoffed. You always say that. If you don't want to hang out, then just say so. You don't have to make bullshit excuses. Lynn, come on. Give me a break. I recognized the girl. She was one of the two that lobbed water at my face. As soon as they were gone and out of sight, Tansu stepped back into my peripheral. Then, I was overcome by an odd sensation. Having her hide behind me, me, of all people, surged this protective role throughout my body. Like how I imagine Joey feels every time he came to my rescue. It feels good. And now... I carried on with strength in my step. That brush with a couple was the biggest excitement for a little while. The two of us were able to wander around the school, uninterrupted, to most of the classrooms and the auditorium, keeping relatively quiet apart from my tour speech. She gave a fairly mute response, little nods, whispers of affirmation. No questions. It wasn't until we exited through the auditorium's outdoor entrance that she got more vocal. Or rather, her voice grew a little louder, if anything. We walked along a paved path that led from the auditorium to the sports field out back, and I noticed her movements relaxed. Her shoulders weren't as tight anymore, and her head was almost raised to a normal level. Our outdoor tour brought us to the baseball diamond, soccer field, and shed which housed miscellaneous equipment. We were a good distance away from the school, and honestly, I didn't really talk much myself by this point. My skin and hair were being warmed by the late September sun, filling my soul to the brim with clarity and shivers. Her body language gave away her openness. No longer gripping her bag straps, her steps forward vigorously bounced her hair and her eyelids were fully drawn. Although, this wouldn't last. We were a good 100 yards away from the auditorium entrance when I heard the bell blaring. Our first free period was over, and it would be smart to get back indoors. We didn't re-enter through the auditorium doors. I forgot that those doors wouldn't open from the outside unless there was an event being held. Luckily, I knew of another door near the woodworking room that was always unlocked. It took us a few minutes to walk around the building, but we were able to get back inside without any further problems. Once inside, I took in the stuffy smell and adjusted. We both waited a moment just inside the door, and I gave quick thought to how much time we had left. Neither of us had said a word since we saw that we were locked out, and before that was just about a ten-minute gap of silence. I started to feel a bit awkward. I needed to fill the air with something, but small talk was never my strong suit. Hey, Tansu? Yeah? She responded. 
What do you think about the school so far? The way she stood now, I watched her pick apart all of the little ignored things. Things I tracked along with her. Scuffs on the floor, posters, one dead bulb above, and a ceiling tile with a water stain. She was thinking. I kind of like it. Indecision was apparent. Not as good as your old school? In some ways, but it's mostly good. All right. How about the teachers? Any ones you like? Mm, I don't know. None stand out? Uh, Mr. Lane can be a butthead, but he's a sweet guy. I think you'd get along with most of them if you gave them a chance. She shrugged. A lot of times they come off as fake. They smile too hard. Especially... She pondered. Um... I completed the thought. Mr. Kell? She nodded. Yeah. Uh, he is not as weird as you think, but he's definitely the biggest smiler we have. Still, you should try to get to know him. It'd make things a lot easier throughout the year. It's... too difficult. I spoke reassuringly. You seem to be doing okay with me. This made her blush a little and let out a fragile smile again. Well, you're... different. My brow raised. Uh, how so? She looked at me. You seem genuine, I think. A shuffling of her foot drew my eye, which unfocused and returned to her lips, avoiding eye contact. She muttered, You have more color than anyone else so far. No response sprang forward, leaving me awkwardly gawking at her. A few seconds of uncertainty, and I strung together a reply. Well, thanks. I wasn't sure how to approach you in the hall before, but I'm glad I did. I think we could be friends. I smiled wide. Her eyes shot open, and her cheeks turned beet red. The tiny freckles beneath her right eye were almost completely hidden beneath the rosy blush. Friends? I smiled, then nodded. Yeah, if you want. I didn't give her time to answer. Instead, I motioned to continue the tour because now I felt on the spot. C come on, let's hit the library next. I ushered us along, keeping this fresh enthusiasm close to my heart. She hid her blush for a moment. Once her face had returned to normal, she spoke loud and clear. We don't have to. I know where the library is. Well, I'm sorry to say, you're just going to have to put up with it, because I need to use the computers. Thankfully, she understood my sarcasm. If I have to, she smirked, playing along. We started walking, keeping in stride with each other and almost aligning our steps. As we walked, I sneakily stole glances. That's when I noticed her hand. Apart from before, where her hand seemed relaxed, she now had that same strange fist again. It piqued my curiosity, but wasn't that important to bug her about. My guess is it's some kind of nervous tick. As we turned down the hallway, the library doors could be seen up ahead. I swiftly turned my head toward her. Okay, so I need to look something up online, but I don't really know where to start. Do you mind helping me? We locked eyes for a moment. I felt a surge of fear with the unintentional glare and darted my gaze to the side. Sure, but how long do we even have? She asked. Melissa, I mean, Miss Jones, the front desk lady, said we have two periods to roam. Okay. What is it we're looking up? Well, you're going to think it's weird, but I want to look up something paranormal, like a ghost. She looked puzzled and suspicious. A ghost? Nervous and suddenly feeling stupid, I looked away. And, yeah... To my surprise, she giggled. It was so petite, like a little machine gun of high-pitched child wonderment. I love ghost stuff, she said with genuine cheer in her voice. Really? Yeah. What specifically are we looking up? She got excited in a dulcet and contained way. That's the thing, I'm not exactly sure. I think my house is haunted. 
then again, I have problems staying asleep at night sometimes, and if that happens, I might end up seeing things that aren't there. Like shadows or maybe hallucinations. I explained while staring at my feet. I had a nightmare last night, and it got me all fucked up. I side-eyed her and was just looking ahead as we slowly crossed the hall. Interesting, she pondered, then in a cute voice said, Maybe we can exercise it from your home. This made me snicker a bit. I definitely did not expect her reaction. The two of us walked through the door. Tansu naturally stayed close behind me while I got stuck holding it open for a few other students who were leaving. <coughs> Funny enough, one of the last kids to pass us was Joey. He noticed me there and stopped, allowing me to let it close. Yo, what's up, Kim? He greeted, happy to see me. A mishmash of conflicting emotions tangled in my belly and defaulted to a lax presentation. Mm, nothing really, just gotta do some research, I explained. Oh, nice. He responded, then looked past me to see Tansu there. He raised an eyebrow and shuffled his feet a little. I don't know if you've noticed, but you've got a tail rider, he chuckled. I did as well, then stepped to the side, exposing her. Be nice. This is Tansu. She went completely red in the face and got behind me again. Oh, uh, how's it going? He said with a smile, trying to catch a glimpse. She shyly nodded, acknowledging his words. I gave him an amused look. She says hi. Well, all right then. I uh, won't keep you from your research. I'll talk to you later. He grinned and opened the door again. Later, Joseph. He whipped back around, halfway out the door. Hey, you know better than that, he moaned. Do I? I sneered with a cunning grin. He shook his head, entertained by my attitude, and left. As soon as he was gone and the door was closed again, she loosened up and gave me a relieved face. Joey? she asked. Yep, my childhood best friend. I'll properly introduce you to at some point, if that's okay. I think you'd get along. Her voice dropped an octave. We'll see. After that minor delay, I approached the desk and got assigned a computer. We quickly took our seats and I logged into my account. I slid the mouse and keyboard her way and she positioned them comfortably. In the meantime, I took out a notebook from my bag, just in case I needed to take some notes. All right. She undid her fists and clicked on the web browser. What are we looking for? I closed my eyes and tried to recall the events, digging deep to uncover any small detail that would help our search. These recent highlights were far from the only bizarre encounters, but one-off random noises and visions didn't rate high on the scale. I needed to consider things that overlapped, things that repeated. Uh, from what I can remember, it was this black mass. It was really freaking tall and thin, but it didn't look like a monster, more like a person. Except their entire body was darker than the darkness around them. There were other times when I heard, like, voices or movements. I don't know. A lot of weird stuff has happened. I explained with contained confusion. That's really spooky. Is it always in the same places? My heart was pounding a little, all the faint details creeping back to the front of my mind. The images I saw flashed wildly over my eyes. I heard noises everywhere. In the kitchen, my room, the basement, even outside or at school. Sometimes I think I'm imagining it, but it feels separate to me, if that makes sense. But the only times I saw this shadow was in and around my bedroom, and the basement that one time. I swallowed hard. She gave me a quick stare. I mean, from what I know, that sounds like a shadow figure. There are a lot of stories about them, but not all of it is consistent. Harmless echoes of the past sort of thing, but that doesn't explain noises you hear, she speculated. My lower lip curled, impressed. You seem to know a lot about this. I watched a lot of scary movies with my dad, and my grandmother on my mother's side is really superstitious. I paused and seriously doubted that it was just an apparition. 
If I only just saw it, then maybe it could be explained that way. But the feeling in my chest, that vibration in my head, along with the voices, just wasn't normal. I don't think those symptoms fall under the category of a typical ghost or shadow person. Okay, besides that, what else could it be? I asked. She paused, then leaned closer to the computer screen. I watched her flip through multiple pages, scanning and scrolling. She must have been searching for ten minutes in silence. Until, finally, she leaned back and sighed through her nose. I think you'll have to be more specific. I can't find anything different. I thought harder and harder. I know there was something else. I had an itch in my brain that screamed at me to remember. Almost actively suppressing itself. What else? I put my hand on my chin and thought hard. Then it hit me. How could I forget? Yellow. I broke the silence. Yellow? She repeated. I glared at her. More than once, I've seen this shape with narrow, glowing yellow eyes. Sometimes just one eye, but they were locked on to me, deliberately, like it knew I could see it. Glowing yellow eyes. That's definitely important. She turned back to the screen. At that moment, the bell sprang to life and interrupted our search. Honestly, I was a bit relieved that we had to log off. A part of me really didn't want to know the truth. I just wished it would go away. Bummer, she sighed. I returned to a mid-level of contentedness. That's okay. It's lunchtime anyway, I said as we both stood up. As we both shouldered our bags, I spoke up again. Do you want to sit together while we eat? Maybe next time. Today is the last day they want me to check in at the office and let them know how I'm integrating. Gotcha. Both of us headed toward the door together, but as I got close to the exit, I realized I forgot my notebook on the table. Uh, hold on, Tansu, I forgot something. I turned around and ran back to the desk we were at. I snatched it up, but did so in a way that caused me to fumble the book and it fell to the ground. I averted my eyes quickly and looked at Tansu by the door. She stood off to the side, by the printers that were on the table by the door, out of the way of the stream of other kids going in and out. When the notebook hit the floor, it opened and landed lime paper down. I picked it up and looked at the pages, and I felt a chill run down my spine. That fear that was pushing at the back of my mind had taken over. The page that the notebook had opened to had something on it. Something I had no explanation for. In the center of the page was a rugged circle, almost like a solid coffee cup stain that bled into the pages. The stain didn't look like an ink spill or a marker. No, this was familiar to me. This black puddle of mysterious darkness seemed to expand outward, slowly absorbing the page. I was hyper-focused on the stain, and the more I stared, the more I began to distinguish depth. It didn't seem flat to me. Instead, I had the feeling that I could reach into this void and place myself within it. A steady whispering grew in my ears. Voices seemed to amplify from this book, from this stain. I could feel my heart race, and I couldn't look away. It was as if everything around me vanished, and I was all alone. I struggled to force a movement, like I had woken up in the middle of the night with sleep paralysis. It seemed impossible to reanimate, until finally, the blood flowed through my veins, and I regained control. I slammed the book closed with unnecessary force, hands trembling. I nervously turned around, then back again, checking my surroundings. I stared toward the lady at the sign-in desk. She looked back and smiled. I looked away and opened the book again and flipped through the pages, but the page that grabbed hold of my mind was gone. What the hell? I whispered to myself. I tried to gather my mind, but I was completely distraught. 
I began to panic. My fingers became clammy, and the notebook slipped from my grasp. As it hit the floor again, I felt a hand touch my shoulder. I jerked in place and whipped my head around to find Tansu there, looking at me with worry in her eyes. Kim? What's wrong? She asked. Huh? Y yeah, I'm fine, I said with a visible shake. I didn't ask if you were okay. I asked what was wrong. She spoke. I shook my head and replied. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, er everything's okay. It's okay. I tried to calm down, unsure as to why I wasn't telling her what i just experienced. My lips felt sewn shut, and I couldn't breathe. What did I just experience? It seemed so distant. She had a concerned look on her face, then bent down to pick up the notebook. A stab in my chest. I, I just... Can you look through the book and tell me if you see anything weird? I requested. Sure, she seemed off-put by my request. I watched her sift through the pages, and when she reached the end, she closed it and handed it back to me. There's nothing in there besides some doodles and English notes, I think. Call it paranoia, or whatever you want, but I wanted to avoid my house for a little longer than school hours. Hey, Tansu, I know this is weird, but do you think it would be okay with your parents if maybe we stayed after school together? Hmm, why would you want to do that? I'm in no rush to get home. It's Friday, and I won't see anyone this weekend, so, you know, I want to get my social fill before it ends. And besides, we could hang around the cafeteria, or better yet, I can help you with your schoolwork, I suggested with a hopeful tone. Her spirit was surprisingly delighted. I like that. I'll call my mom from the office. I'm almost certain she will say yes. She giggled again. Awesome. I guess I'll meet you there after school. Let me know if anything changes, all right? You got it, Kimmy. Her petite voice squeaked, and she started moving for the door again. I watched her slip into the hall, fragile and small. Smiling. Just smiling. I replayed our brief time in my head and overanalyzed everything the both of us had said. It was a bad habit to deconstruct any positive interaction and find the mistakes. This time, I came out on the other side feeling mostly good, apart from the hiccup at the end, whatever it was. Never has something that intense and immersive followed me at school. Never have I felt so torn in multiple directions of fiction and reality, a nagging pain to stray from home. It was as if someone else had reached up from deep within my belly with the request, something knowing and aware of the horrors on my mind. I don't understand what any of this is, but I'm glad for this interaction. Still, worry burned. This entire thing, whatever it is, has become something more than simple fear, and I feel so disjointed.